Edgar Schein is a former professor at the MIT Sloan School of Management in Massachusetts, USA. Also, he has worked for many years as a consultant in organizational development and corporate culture. Edgar Schein was one of the leading researchers in culture when cultural theory emerged in the early 1980s. According to this theory, culture is a metaphor for the organization of the company. Edgar Schein's theory is in what we call the functional perspective, where culture serves as a particular function in the organization. He mentions two functions. The first is to create a community among the employees and create a pleasant atmosphere in the daily work. And the second is to adapt the organization to the external surroundings to survive and grow. In Shine's understanding of culture, there is no difference between talking about an organization or a group. Culture occurs between a larger or a smaller group of people who have something in common. Whether you call it an organization or a group does not matter in this context. The way the members of the organization act concerning values, norms and terms define the culture of the organization. Culture is thus a way of explaining the organization's being. Shine offers the following definition of organizational and group culture. A pattern of shared basic assumptions that the group learned as it solved its problems of external adaption and internal integration that has worked well enough to be considered valid and, therefore, to be taught to new members as the correct way to perceive, think and feel in relation to those problems. As a functionalist, Shine thus regards culture as something that is everywhere in the organization and characterizes its members. Edgar Schein divides culture into three levels. The upper level is artifacts and behaviors, which are visible. The middle level is espoused values, which are less visible. The lowest level is basic assumptions, which take place at the unconscious level among the members and are thus invisible. The model is also called the iceberg model. Like an iceberg, the lower part is hidden. Only approximately 10% is visible above the water surface. Let's review the three levels separately. At the upper level, we have artifacts and behaviors. Artifacts are the first thing you see when you visit a company for the first time, both from the outside and when you enter the company. The company's buildings and facade, the logo, the way employees dress, the interior design such as furniture selection and decor, the art on the walls, the reception desk, and the way the front staff receive you. This physical evidence is an essential part of the artifacts, but also the way the employees talk to each other, as well as how they speak to you in person and on the phone, are part of the artifacts. The artifacts provide an insight into how the organization wants to appear on first sight and how it appears to you. Artifacts are thus visible organizational structures and processes that are easy to observe, but difficult to interpret. The interpretation of artifacts is subjective, and we look at them from our point of view. We relate them to our world of life and associated values. At the next level, we have espoused values. They are the organization's stated values and norms and present the formal rules under which the organization works. The management of the company determines the values and form of the framework for the work. These values include, for instance, the company's website, 
the organizational structure, annual reports, brochures, and other written materials. The espoused values are thus the expressed, publicly announced principles and values that the members of the organization claim to live by. Sometimes the visitors to the company will wander about meeting different value sets on the first two levels. For instance, if the company website expresses an exclusive style and design, but the visitor is met by mess and disorder when visiting the company. At the bottom level, we have the basic assumptions of the company. This level represents the core of the organization. If a basic assumption is firmly rooted in a group, members will perceive any behavior based on any other basis as incomprehensible. Basic assumptions are routines and norms in everyday life that we neither challenge nor debate and are therefore extremely difficult to change. This is where culture has real power. There is a correlation between the three levels. The arrows show that if the values expressed are consistent with the basic assumptions, then these are actual values. If there is no consistency in the values at the individual levels, then the organization has a problem where employees do not thrive and where surprises emerge for customers and other partners as they get to know the company. Therefore, when analyzing a given culture, it is essential to compare the expressed values with the basic assumptions. Now follows a review of using the model as an analysis tool. Organizational culture can be considered as an important tool for the managers. A leader can consciously influence the culture in the desired direction. A first step may be to look at the artifacts. How do we talk together? How are we dressed? Is there anything different from what the manager thought it would be? Artifacts are the visible surface, but essential for the manager to note. The objects are what customers, suppliers, investors and visitors see when visiting the company. If something should change, then the leader must descend into the other levels. The next step is the espoused values. What declared values do we have? What do we write on our website? How are our mail or intranet communications? What are our written rules? Here, it is crucial for the manager or the person doing this cultural analysis to notice if there is a difference between what people say, what they are doing, and what they actually are doing. Here you see the official image of the company. If this analysis shows that a change is needed, then the next step is to look at the basic assumptions. The last step is basic assumptions. To make a change, the basic assumptions that exist in the company must be taken into account. Here you look at behavioral traits, the language they use, the customs and traditions that evolve, and the rituals that they use in widely different situations. Group norms, the implicit standards and values that develop in working groups, for example, ending the workday at 4 p.m., regardless of whether the orders are delivered, even though one of the company's expressed values is on-time delivery. Game rules, the implicit rules of the organization, the scams that a newcomer must necessarily learn to be accepted as a member. Climate in the group. The mood created in a group 
by the physical framework and by the way members of a group interact with each other and others. Everything that happens within the company is based on the organization's basic assumptions. It is difficult for employees and managers themselves to see the basic assumptions because they are so much a part of everyday life. That is why it is so difficult to change strategy when it involves changing basic assumptions in the group or the whole organization. The arrows here show that the basic assumptions spread to other levels in the organization and become visible to customers, suppliers and other relevant business partners in the long run. When change processes get off track, it is more often than not because you forget to take into account the third level of Shine's model, the basic assumptions. The process often fails because management has only taken into account the behaviour and values that are visible and has therefore planned a process that goes against the culture in the organisation. And then culture wins over strategy. We shall now review an example of the use of the model. The Danish company Vola which produces kitchen and bathroom fittings, has successfully worked on cultural change in the company with a move from technician culture to designer culture. The salespeople in the company were rooted in quality fitting and had a strong focus on the technology and facts about the products in the sales process. Vola fittings are of high quality and additionally unique in design, made by the well-known designer Arne Jakobsen. The problem occurred with the emergence of several competitors who produced and sold fittings of a similar model at a lower price. Customers could not immediately see the difference from the original and copied fitting. And even though Vola worked to protect the rights, and was legally after the competitor, it still influenced the sale of Vola fittings negatively. Vola salespeople were aware of Arne Jakobsen's design, but they were used to thinking about facts and product specifications. The management at Vola decided to change the culture of the company from being a technician culture to a designer culture they initiated a process of change during the following mission. By faithfulness to Arne Jacobsen's geometric design universe and through technical innovation, design development, production and marketing to build and maintain Vola Design as a unique global brand that stands for the following values. Originality, aesthetics, timelessness, Individuality. Innovation. Now we shall review criticism of Edgar Schein's model. Edgar Schein uses the concept of culture in relation to companies. The concept of culture belongs to anthropology, where you work quite differently with the concept than you do in the organisation and management literature. This can give a vague and confusing picture of the concept of culture. When the corporate culture theory emerged in the 1980s, three directions emerged. The rational, where culture is a tool to achieve the company's goals. The symbolic, where culture consists of rituals and metaphors. And the function, which is the direction that shine represents. Thus, there is no consensus on the concept of corporate culture. Therefore, how you understand and use the concept is essential for you as a theorist. You can also say that Schein has a logical explanation problem. He assumes that the basic values are stable 
and form the core of organizational culture. At the same time, he acknowledges that the other levels can be influenced by external forces, which logically must also affect the basic assumptions. Despite the weaknesses, it must be said that Edgar Schein's model is clear and concrete. It is a model that is easy to relate to when analysing an organisation about its culture.